What is up everyone? This is Big Poner and today I'm doing kind of an update, give you guys some tips, things that I did to get to where I'm at now, which is clearing tier 16 maps. I've got Awakener 5 about to have Awakener 6. I'll be on that before I finish these. Um so I want to give tips for people that are at pretty much any place. Granted, there's going to be people that are probably ahead of me because I've had a very rough season start. Um, but I think a lot of people are experiencing the, the server issues and stuff like that. So everyone's probably behind where they thought that they were going to be unless you just happen to be one of those people that got really lucky and all your game time was when servers were up and you didn't have DCs and losing maps and all of that stuff. However, wherever you're at, I'm going to give you guys some tips as far as what you should do at this point in the season, the things that I did at this point in the season, and to get to this point, things that you guys should use as upgrades because they're really cheap and they're really strong for the market price. The first thing is the bow that I started with. I went with the Lion Eyes, the Lion Eyes Glare. The reason why I went with the Lion Eyes Glare is because it has massive damage for its cost and it is extremely extremely strong I've gone over this last season far shot hits cannot be evaded the mana when you're in early levels is actually really nice because it lets you reserve more mana and still have enough room to breathe um, to be able to shoot um, and still get off your cast when damage is taken stuff like that these are like one chaos so it's a realistic thing for everyone to get one um, Another thing that I used this season for a very cheap Assassin's Mark was the Oscarm Gloves. Super cheap. Um, I don't even know if these cost a chaos anymore. Um, so another super, super cheap option. Obviously, we're going to be going into Zodiac Leather and Arborix Bow. I released a video on how you can make the Arborix Bow. They are more expensive this season. This is the first season in like four seasons last four seasons the arborix bow was cheaper than the death opus by at least half like whole beginning of the season they are going to come down in price a lot just in the last 24 hours we've seen them drop like three x alts so they are getting much more affordable the thing that i would suggest is if you are going to just buy one and not farm for the swords to make it would be to watch the market for the, the swords instead of just buying one. Normally you're going to be able to buy the swords, um, but make sure you can buy both of them when you do that so that you're not buying something that's then going to devalue because obviously as more people can get them, they're going to come down in price. There aren't a ton of people playing bows, which I didn't think there was going to be. So we are in luck with that. Um, so our gear in general is going to be really cheap, which is really nice. Um, so obviously the Arbrix is going to be our end game bow. I haven't done the, the beast craft yet. 10% increased damage. If you guys haven't seen that, go watch that video. I made it last season. No reason for me to redo it. Is that's literally all the video is covering. It's only a couple minutes long. We definitely want the Zodiac this season, especially early. You definitely want the Arbrix uh, as soon as possible. Those are two of the biggest upgrades. Um, I, you know, you can wait. But if you have the currency, the thing is, is having the items is going to make it so that you can advance. Yes, in a week, the Arbrix bow is probably going to be like 30 chaos or something like that. However, if you can afford it now, you're going to have a whole week of being strong enough to be able to do tier 16 maps pretty easily. And you're not going to um, miss out on all that potential currency. As far as bosses, my gear is okay right now. There's a lot of room for upgrades. Some bosses are slow. Some maps suck because some maps are just hard. We have to get through this stage. But in general, at this point, not having any of my good jewels, not having Watcher's Eye, not having my Timeless Jewel, not having, you know, optimal stuff. I'm still using stuff like, you know, the Oscarm gloves. I don't have my curse rings. I don't have expensive anointments. And I'm crushing the, not only tier 16 maps, but also the the um, the league mechanic. It's honestly not as hard as I thought it was going to be. 
you could get to a point basically where my build is at right now. If you learn the dangerous stuff in the maps right now with what I'm wearing, you, you're going to be able to clear all content. As far as killing Sears, it ain't going to happen. You ain't going to be farming Sears um, in the gear that I'm in. They actually buffed him and made him even harder. I hopped in once to try it out, and I was just like, well, I tried on Awakener 4. And I hopped in and checked it out, and I was just like, no, like, th this is now a boss killer fight. So, I'm not even going to waste time. I didn't even use my portals. I just kind of burned them off, like, and then just continued on with mapping. It's just a waste of time, honestly. That being touched on, the focus of this build is for mapping, and it does it really well. Once you start getting up to the higher levels, um, I would suggest starting to sextant. They are a lot more pack size. The thing that I'm going to say, I'll actually do a video covering the mechanic, but the thing that I will say is they made the the new league mechanic so good on pack size. Uh, we were already going to be planning to, to use pack size if you guys watched my preseason videos. I was already telling you guys to use pack size. Well, because of the how the league mechanic works, it's even more profitable. So if you've been saving your sextants, you're going to have a nice little surprise at the end. The thing that I do want to say, I'm going to give you guys a quick little demonstration. Um, which map? Okay. Well, I got a tier 15 in a zone that I can run. Let me put this away. So... Let me see if I can get, I'm not going to clear the whole map, but I want to clear the league mechanic and show you guys a couple of the things that are super dangerous because I know some people were telling me that some of the stuff is like really giving them trouble. So I'm going to see if I can find some of that stuff. And I think this map spawns some of the, ow, oh, that hurt. So. That's exactly what I was looking for. Ah, it despawned. I got hit by one. Um, so there's these little, they look like, kind of like little floating, like, rabbit turds or, like, eyeballs with no eye. You have to watch out for, for those. I'm kind of going slow because I'm trying to get one to spawn and not have it, not have it unseeable. So obviously like charge attack things like that you need to avoid those the yellow bosses the yellow rare enemies will do that also when you spawn like when they have spawned effects like for instance fireballs I actually take and try to trigger those by running into them as soon as possible and then flashing away from them because they do like a a, a mechanic for the league that's like a charge attack Ooh, man, I was going too fast, and I just wasted one. I'm trying to get you guys to be able to see it. So anytime you see, like, those dudes stand up, those are pretty pretty big indicators. They don't turn. They don't follow you. So they're actually really easy to avoid. No, I didn't. I didn't get one to spawn. Well, you've seen how the build runs now. It. <laughs> I will do a video covering the league mechanics, and I'll probably have to run it several times so I can get some clear shots of the most dangerous mechanics in here. Um, but you've seen how the build runs. The build runs really well. The thing that you'll notice that's different in my end game kind of mapping version is I'm using Mirage Archer. Why am I using Mirage Archer now? For the last league. I was using um, turrets, and we were using Scourge Arrow on the turrets. And why is that? Because they're stationary, and we were killing bosses. That was the main thing that we needed help with. So that build for last season, I told you guys there's going to be changes. This season, the changes, we're switching to Mirage Archer. 
why is that? Because the league mechanic is mapping. The thing is, the Mirage Archer works better. And you'll notice that I have higher damage on my bow with only three projectiles when I get my Dying Sun. It hasn't been a priority for me because obviously it's been like as expensive as the Arborix bow, so I'm not going to prioritize my currency into that. So eventually I'll have five projectiles there, and then you can see my... I have a ton of projectiles on my Mirage Archer shot. The thing is, the Mirage Archer stays with us. It's right on us. And the thing is, is I'm running high freeze. So it works as a defensive and offensive clear. I have more focused fire with my attacks, which are doing more damage. And then I have a constant fire and also a bigger wave that I can also just shoot on a second six link. So if I just want to clear stuff and get rid of all the trash stuff, I can fire that instead of firing my, my primary. Obviously, that takes a lot more mana because I'm not planning on using it as much, so I'm not running Inspiration on it. I'll show you guys my links. So I have Mirage Archer, greater multiple projectiles because this is more for just freeze and clear, kind of defensive and offensive, just something that's going to stay on me as I'm running through. It's going to constantly be shooting and clearing stuff off me because we have a lot of stuff that just pops up around us inside of the Delirium. Then we have, uh, obviously, the Ice Shot. Right now I'm running Increased Criticals, um, Elemental Damage with Attack Skills, and Added Cold Damage. The Increased Criticals is important because when you get a Critical, it skyrockets the damage, obviously, because we have the Critical Hit Multiplier. So to get our, a really high Critical Hit Chance, we're running the Critical Hit Chance um, Increased Critical Strike Support. What this does is it gives a higher chance to freeze because freeze, chill, apply ailments because there's a threshold that each monster has. And the higher your hit is, the easier it is, or it even makes it possible to hit that freeze point and to actually crowd control those enemies. So it is important to be using the increased criticals. Once we get to a place where our gear and our items are boosting our critical so high that it's not gaining, we're not gaining anything from us, then we will switch to increased critical damage because then we're going to be boosting that damage even higher, which makes it so that then we can um, freeze and chill even tougher enemies. So that is the reason why we're doing these links. And then obviously added cold damage. Primary um, attack is going to be the same. Elemental damage with attack skills, inspiration, added cold damage, ice shot, increased critical strike support, and cold penetration. I'm running really high cold penetration. Taming, uh, I mean, all the stuff's pretty much the same. I, all, the, all my other gear is just um, the best stuff that I can find, stat cows um, at this point. You know, I'm not in end game gear. The build is going to go so much further, and to see how well it is running already in relatively relatively cheap gear. Some people might be looking at my gear and be like, be like, holy shit, he's super geared right now. And other people might be like, I've got better gear. But people who have better gear are probably in the, in the same place where I am, where you can easily farm tier 16 maps. The reason why I'm showing you this, and the reason why I love a good gameplay is, is the build is really good even in this type of in this type of gear like put a bunch of life on your stat slots to get to a certain place i have really low hp 3959 obviously when i change out stuff like this and i get better gear slots and i get some more levels i'm going to be able to get my hp back up to around where it was last season i'm probably not going to wind up switching into a crafted chest this league the reason why is because the Damage isn't going to be an issue this league, honestly. I've done multiple Delirium Orbs, and the only thing that is actually hard to kill is the bosses in the Delirium, and I've killed them several times. And the thing is, is that he drops shit. Even on Tier 16 maps, multiple Delirium Orbs, he drops shit. And the thing is, is the rewards inside of the Delirium are based on your kills, and it's not like he gives some big increase to your delirium in most cases killing him is completely pointless outside of his drop so i have just completely stopped started skipping him because it's a waste of time unless you have so much damage that you can basically clear through 
through that boss like it's just like a regular minion basically it's not worth killing even if i were to cut down the kill time on that thing to to you know half a third it still honestly would not be worth the time because the whole thing that we're going for in delirium which i'm going to cover this more in delirium i just kind of wanted to give you guys like an overall update so that you guys can have some help and you guys can have some tips he doesn't affect it hardly at all and every single time i've done the delirium there's normally like a big amount of of like un untappable you know charge on the delirium because you like charge it up and then when you reach a certain level then it drops your loot i've never hit it right on or been like one kill away from getting the next level if i was one kill away from getting the next level i would probably go kill him because then it might be worth it but other than that situation it's complete waste of time um and i've killed him i've killed him quite a few times i've killed him I actually just started skipping him because I was hoping to see like some good loot drop from him. I realized very qu quickly that he dropped, um, that he didn't really affect the delirium charge gauge at all because you can't even see it move when you kill him. It's just like killing a regular minion. But I was hoping that maybe he'd have some good loot, but I've killed him several times and he just drops garbage. Um, it's like I said, it's just it's like killing a super super tanky rare. So. I'm honestly just going to completely ignore him unless my build gets to a place where I'm completely just, you know, obliterating him. Let's talk about the tree. I will post my um, a pace bin. The first thing that I want to say is these jewels are these um, these new clusters are really strong. They can be really strong at least. So like on this one, I have. I have this right here, 10% cold penetration against chilled enemies. That is huge, because what has it taken me to get here? It takes me three stat points. I get 10% cold penetration right here. We have eight. This obviously gives us more damage, but these are 12% increased cold damage also. So the, if you can justify this, this is justified. The other thing is, the main thing that you want, you want a four stat one, or three stats and a jewel slot. So we have... Basically, I work my way here, and then how many, every two, I'm getting a major. 10% all resistance, 30% increased damage. That's really nice. And then I get a jewel slot. And then two more, and I get 25% increased elemental damage, 10% chance to blind. What makes these even better is, and you guys need to start paying attention and watching for these, because you might not want to socket these right away, because you need a decent amount of stat points to make these worthwhile. And there's other places on your tree that are kind of like our bread and butter of our build. But I want you guys to start paying attention to, to stuff that's going to be really useful. This is something that you should pay attention to because if you're struggling a little bit with your HP, the build becomes really tanky around like 4,500 to 5k HP. Like that should be the goal. The thing is, is because we have so much damage reduction in the build setup how that I have it, that at 4500 to 5000 hp you're going to start feeling a lot tankier you're going to be able to take hits as you can see you know i was pretty close to dying when i took some big hits inside of that map so obviously if i get you know a nice little cushion past that that's going to be really nice and it's going to make me feel not so panicked um or if i take a little tiny hit after that i'm not going to wind up dying uh, so it, a little more hp is going to going to make make it a lot nicer so something like this is super nice this only takes two stat points and what is it i'm gaining from this specific one 12 percent max life 0.5 percent life regeneration per second and every five seconds i regenerate 10 percent of of life over one second that is really nice because that's going to take um two two stat points um and then one for for the jewel socket th so three stat points is going to give us 12 percent hp why is it that this is a big deal? The reason why it's a big deal is because normally we're going to have to do stuff like, oh, I'm going to come over here. What is this over here? This is 13% HP. Granted, we get this right here, but I'm going to cover that also. How many points is it going to take to get over here? One, two, three, four, five. This is basically five wasted points of basically nothing. Six, seven, eight points to get to here. Are there a lot of stuff that 
as we're branching out, you know, stuff close together that's going to be useful? Yes. However, eight points into doing that, is a huge amount of points and what is it that we can do instead we can use a medium cluster and these two things this is seven points so for seven points i could have another four stats this one isn't a very good example this one's kind of bad um, um all right well I don't really have that good of an example of one because that's the reason why I don't have it filled up. Um, I think, all right, area damage. Uh, let's pretend there's other good stats on here. This is a combined seven points. We would be getting 12% HP. We'd be getting this really nice regen stats. And then on top of this, on the small one, I'm getting you know the extra strength, the extra dexterity. Uh, that's kind of like close to a uh, one of those little stats and then on this we're going to have four more stats obviously we're going to need a jewel socket and then three other stats so there's going to be another we're going to be able to have like another passive on there and then the small stuff's going to do stuff for us um, if we fill that out that's the same amount of points it's going to wind up being stronger what makes it really nice is we can use these to kind of finish the build. Say, for instance, like here's a good example. I need a little bit more chaos resistance or say elemental resistance. These are like a fill in thing. Like if I need a little bit more HP, I can be like, oh, got me some a little bit more HP in here. And I also need elemental resistances. So I go for one of these that has elemental resistance. I think they have a fire resistance and or a specific element that can go up to 15 per passive. So that's really big. I mean, you're talking about like, like say I, I just completely have dumped on, on an elemental resistance. I need a bunch. My gear is completely set. I could go for a, a cluster jewel and finish off those resistances that I need. Pretty much anything. Obviously, it's more ideal for us to get a large, um, all of our, our resistances on gear in the correct places, and then to be able to focus on damage and HP and stuff like that. But I wanted to touch on that real quick. I will go, um, I'll do a little section on this. This is kind of just like a, a broad touch. A couple other things that I did. Oh, and before before I forget to say this, this is something that someone that was new to the build winded up doing, and they were just making their life really hard. And it's understandable if you're doing this and you don't know because you haven't played the build, so I want to touch on it. So normally, this jewel right here we get inside of the axe. It's really nice, 20%, uh, well, up to, this one's perfect roll. Up to 20% increased damage against chilled enemies, 25% increased area of effect, and shots pierce three additional targets. When you get this, you're like, sweet, and it helps you a lot through the axe. However, you need to unsocket this jewel as soon as you get ricochet. The reason why is we don't want any penetration. Your first three stats should be going, your first two um, ascendancies should be going to ricochet. As soon as you get ricochet, you need to remove this because it's going to make it much harder for you to clear maps. You're going to struggle a lot. And the reason why is because your arrows aren't going to be chaining pretty much at all because it's going to be piercing instead, which the pierce early when you don't have chain is nice because you can shoot it through stuff and it's going to get more hits. However, the chain guarantees that it's going to get those extra hits if there's anything around you, which makes clearing way more simple and way more effective. So do not have pierce on your character. It is going to basically severely cripple your build. If you happen to have a quiver that is just like really, really nice and it has the plus one pierce. Plus one, if your quiver is really nice and you don't have a replacement for it, I would go ahead and keep the really nice quiver, but I would be looking for something to replace it. One pierce is not as big of a deal because if it's an isolated target, the 10% more damage is gonna still be in effect. If there's you know a small group, most likely it's gonna pierce the first one there's a decent chance it'll hit another one in chain. Um, it still doesn't run as smooth with one pierce, but this jewel just completely will ruin the chain and make it so much harder to um, to map. So pay attention to when you get that ascendancy and make sure that you make that swap. 
However, this is an amazing jewel um, as far as running through acts until you get your ascendancies, till you have chain. The other thing that I want to touch in is I haven't even gone for endless munition. This is a small little thing that that is a thing for me. I want the endless music munition. I want the increased area of effect. I want the, the additional projectile. However, I don't want to have an even amount of arrows. The reason why is because I like this shooting center mass. I don't like having to try to off screen stuff and trying to go like sideways to try and get my arrows to go. I just really don't like how even numbers of arrows shoot. I've run that sometimes. Um, and I might wind up going to it because I don't know how long it's going to take me to get a plus one um, quiver, which is going to make it run that way. And honestly, there's just not really stuff that I really want. Um, I could go for, for this for now. 10% attack speed, projectile damage, um, accuracy. Um, I, I could go for that and then wind up swapping it once I get that, which might be what I do. Um, but... Eh, that's just kind of a preference for me. Um, once you have like like three three five arrows, I don't really like breaking that up into even numbers. Um, it's kind of like shooting with two arrows. Arrows, it's kind of just awkward. Um, I, I don't really like it. So, and I'm not having trouble clearing, so I don't really need that one extra projectile. Anyways, other things to touch on. Um, all right, so there's one other thing that I used early. This is pretty much going to be if you're like early in the game, depending on how expensive it is. Um, it, I don't know where I put it. Um, the Frost Ferno, I actually liked, when I'm running through Axe, I wind up using Artillery. And I use it just because I get the new Ballistas as I progress. I kind of liked having artillery when I had a four link um, until I got into a little bit harder maps and I was running delirium faster. It's not so much the damage. I like that it kind of crowd controls a lot. It does have decent damage in the Frost Ferno. So that was one thing that I used. Um, overall, I would say I like the Mirage Archer better for running maps and getting stuff completed. The advantage to the artillery, though, is it shoots a lot further than the Mirage Archer. Last season, they nerfed the range of the Mirage Archer. So it wasn't really very useful for us last season because, you know, we weren't getting, we didn't want to be close to anything. So we didn't want to be going and getting, you know, close to those, um, to those metamorphosis bosses <laughs> for it to actually even do anything. Um, so it was kind of just an empty spot and when we were fighting bosses we wanted the higher direct shot because if we were going to be close to the stuff we might as well drop down the turrets and get the more damage now we're kind of running through maps and stuff spawning right next to us so having that up constantly is an advantage versus having to drop down turrets so that is the reason why we're doing that running through the axe i still liked having the ballistas but once I started getting into into um, deeper mapping, I like the Mirage Archer. When you do make the swap, what I would suggest is taking off hands um, and leveling them up in your off hands, and then um, because there's going to be a major nerf if you have maxed out artillery or ballistas or something like that, and then you wind up making the swap at low levels. It's going to be a much bigger drop in your effective damage, so you might want to level in offhands. Once you do get all of your main gems leveled up, which I need to grab some new ones because I'm leveling stuff up, and then um, I need to swap in new stuff to be leveling it. Always be leveling stuff in your offhands, and why is that? Because it's either potential currency or it's a potential chance to get a, le to, to get a level 21 gem. The thing that you want to do is be leveling up gems that are going to be um, level up gems that are going to be either valuable or not going to be replaced by awakened gems. So, for instance, like cold penetration, I'm not going to do extra cold penetration. Uh, cold penetration, I'm not going to do extra cold penetrations. Why is that? 
The reason why I'm not going to do extra cold penetrations is because I'm going to be getting an awakened cold pen penetration. So there's not really any point in leveling up extras of something that I'm going to be replacing and putting my, you know, my time because play time for leveling jewels is the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It, it's if I'm putting it into something that's going to get replaced, even if I get a level 21, that's kind of a waste of, of those gem slots for leveling. Things that you do want to try to level up. The ice shot is probably not going to be that expensive, honestly, um, for very long. I think they're already only... Um, yesterday, I think they were like one X alt, an X alt and a half. Uh, let's see. The level 21's been coming down. Obviously, if you can't afford to just buy one and you have other types of gear and stuff like that that you need, it's not a top priority. It's kind of like one of those... All right, well, a 0% quality one is... I should have... Oh, yeah, they're already they're already down to, to 9... The lowest one's 90 chaos. There's a bunch for one X alt. So honestly, those probably are going to come down even more. It, we're not playing a popular build, and that's the awesome thing about playing a build that's not popular is you're going to get all your gear and stuff a lot cheaper than people that are playing um, in popular builds, which is always a, a good place to be in because for the same amount of currency dropping, you get a much stronger build. And then... In turn, you get to make even more currency, which like this season, I plan to be making another character early, but obviously getting my character super geared early, cheaper, is going to make it so that I can earn more currency to create that second build. Like, if I wanted to play a super popular build, I would still start something like, like the Ice Shot and then play it after I've made a bunch of currency, because I don't want to compete paying exorbitant prices for anything that has to do with my build because it's popular that'd be really stupid even if i really want to play the skill it's like i should probably i should probably um get my currency somewhere else invest in a build that's going to actually be rewarding for me and then try it out later we got a long season so you know it, you should get a chance to be able to play anything that you want but you want to be able to make your currency early and you want to be able to have fun it's not fun to struggle for all of your gear to be exorbitantly priced and cost more than like a whole build. Big, big damage increases. Um, we're still going to be using the the Brutal Restraint here. I already have it set up for it, but I don't have the currency right now. I spend my currency pretty much as I get it. Um, and then a Watcher's Eye. Um, those will pretty much be the the two big jewel purchases right now i'm using kind of garbage jewels those will be really big damage increases for the build um, and then obviously i need to get some levels but other than that it's running really really well um, i do have the lionized fall here instead of cluster jewels it's just too strong the thing is is we get we get mana leech here which takes care of our um and increased mana leech the thing is we get life leech mana leech damage and then these are all critical strike chance critical strike multiplier more more leech the thing is, is if you don't have these here then you have to get leech somewhere else which costs you three points uh three three points here which th that kind of sucks this is the way you can deal with mana issues until you get uh, a lion eyes um, lion eyes fall but Lion Eyes Fall is cheap because not a lot of people are playing bows. So I would suggest getting one of these um, when you can. It is a really big damage increase. But I would suggest to fill out all this area up here um, because life we get a big set of life through here. We also get critical stats. Um, and then once this is all set up and you start collecting extra points, get your Lion Eyes Fall and then fill this in. This is going to be really nice. It's going to give you the quality of life for the life leech, the quality of life for the mana leech. You're not going to have to use a mana pot anymore. It's going to be really nice, and these add a ton of damage because we get um, a bunch of critical strike, critical strike multiplier. So this is definitely, definitely, definitely something you're still going to be wanting to do unless you wind up finding um, cluster jewels that are going to be stronger than these stats here. However, um, 
for the same number of for the same number of stat points i have some really nice ones and it they just don't come close there's too much utility along with damage inside of here to pass this up in my opinion at this point in the league from what i have seen maybe there'll be some crazy cluster jewel that will get me to swap but i'm i ain't seeing it um like i said i would have to swap in um mana leech somewhere else or and we need some type of of mana regen which means either more points or getting stuff into gear which I don't think is going to be beneficial to um, put these points somewhere else. And it's like, take away three points. I only have four points left to use. <laughs> so I like, well, technically I'm using these three points here too, but we'd be using that for the jewel also if we we're putting that there. So we can't really count that. We could count just the lionized fall, but that's not even counting the stat points we would put into a cluster jewel. Anyways, I hope that this has touched on a lot of stuff and given you guys some direction. I do want to say right here, this section right here, I do fill in. The reason why is because it gives us attack speed and damage. Although it's doing damage over time stats, the actual increase from these four stat points is just so big. Um, that really can't pass it up. There's not really any place that I'm that I've seen in path building that's actually giving for those three points a better increase the way that my tree is up. So I wouldn't prioritize this bottom section here. But when you have some extra points, I would go ahead and fill it in and then um, keep those there. Anyways, thanks for watching. If you have questions, go ahead and leave a comment, and I will be streaming tomorrow night. Thanks for watching. Peace.